Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I, I've, I've tried it, you know, and I end up, like, hitting the hitting <laughs> exactly. the bass drum the same. Exactly. I'm, like, doing this with my feet and my hands like, at the same time, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like I, I would look like a ventriloquist, you know? I would yeah. be robotic and stuff. Um, Welcome to Mosaic Minds, the podcast where every episode is a colorful blend of perspectives, ideas, and conversation. Each week, our diverse team of hosts brings their unique backgrounds, experiences, and interests to the table. Mosaic Minds is your invitation to join the conversation to see the world through a kaleidoscope of viewpoints. So grab a seat, tune in, and let the mosaic unfold before you. Welcome back to Mosaic Minds Podcast. My name is Nick, and to my right, I have Jason. And today, the guys that we have on here uh, literally rock. They are the band The Venom Assembly. Um, they are out of, they're on the East Coast, um, I believe, out of Pennsylvania. And um, I think there's a couple different places you guys are from, I believe, right? So it's Pennsylvania, maybe, Wis- is it Wisconsin? Allentown. About an hour from Philly. Okay, okay. So with their signature blend of classic rock and heavier kind of, I guess we'll call it crunchier elements, the Venom Assembly has a crafted a sound that's as intense and captivating as their live performances. So it sounds like that you guys have some roots in um, like technical guitar. You were talking about Eddie Van Halen um, and some melodic vocals, and that's kind of where when I, I mentioned Dave Mustaine and that kind of thing. So welcome, and we'll definitely dive more into that and talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. So let's get after it and get right into the Venom here. I'm going to start off by just having everybody kind of introduce yourself and maybe what's your uh, role with the band. Sure. I'm John. I'm the bass player. Marty, I'm the uh, guitar player. I do a lot of our mixing, producing, mastering, some of the technical stuff. Uh, I play guitar. I'm JT, and I'm the lead vocals. I'm Sean Michael Bailey, and I'm featured vocalist. I'm Ryan. I'm the drummer. Nice. And we got some uh, very talented musicians here, guys. So I'm going to I'm going to lead you off with this. Let's maybe go a couple of you answer maybe what your biggest uh, musical influence is, And then I'm going to follow that up with a question. So go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll start off. Uh, I've been playing bass uh, probably since I'm about 19 years old. I started playing. I guess my name, but really is uh, Getty Lee, Steve Harris and uh, Billy Sheen. Morning. My biggest musical influence is John. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I know. I can't watch it. Yeah, say that. That's right. <laughs> he paid us all five dollars a piece. He got. He got two. There you uh, go. Eddie <laughs> was my guy growing up. Uh, always has been. Just love him. Then I got into like, you know, Warren D. Martini, Joe Satriani, Steve Vai. Uh, a guy that I really love, uh, Steve Lynch. He's the guitar player for Autograph. So I love some of the B side of like '80s, '90s music. Just trying to bring it together, but uh, music wise, you know, I'm a huge 70s guy, Zeppelin, uh, the Guess Who, you know, some of that. 90s, a little bit of grunge, but after like 2000 and beyond, that's why we're here, just to bring some great music back. But I'm, I'm mainly like a, you know, 1990s back guy. Yeah, thank you for that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we need that. We need the good music brought back. Yes. So I like many others have a ton of influence i actually started out as a drummer when i joined the band i was the drummer we can touch on that later but uh those influences are very different than uh my vocal influences but uh some similar so some of the similar ones are uh like slipknot i love joey nice. georgeson on drums rest in peace um i love i can't even remember his name right now um i loved uh uh Weinberg when Jay, Jay Weinberg when he was doing it for a little bit and now the newest guy he, they're all phenomenal uh, but Corey Taylor far far and beyond just supersedes every vocalist um that I I I would say I aspire to be like um not so much in tone but but in technique um I I try and mimic that my tone I you can never touch him on tone but um and then you mentioned '90s '90s grunge and stuff like that. Lane Staley, you know some of yes. those guys. I love that grit, that guttural. I I like every type of music. I'm not so much a screamer. I do like the the melody. I like harmonies. I like it to have a, a musical 
um, you know, kind of flow to it. And, yeah, he's and had a lot of just, harmonies to the music, which is really cool. Well, I love, just yeah. All gut and rasp, but I do like those elements added into the other. So, you know, really, really just everything. Cool. Yeah, I grew up in the 90s. Well, I was a teenager in the 90s, so Alice in Chains. My, my favorite vocalist is probably Chris Cornell, but Alice in cool. Chains, I love the harmony there between him and, and Jerry Cantrell. You know, like I just, it's amazing. So I, I, that's, I probably resonate most with that. I'm um, Sean. Um, basically, um, Black Sabbath and Metallica. Um, then Stone Sour, which is Corey Taylor's mm -hmm. uh, first band. And Slipknot has uh, made a huge impact in my life when it comes to uh, battling depression and stuff like that. But um, Corey, in my opinion, Corey Taylor, like, as far as best writing, I mean, in my mind, that influenced me most. Corey Taylor, definitely, uh, writing and um, vocal. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, uh, just a lot of rock. I, I like uh, Living Color and Danny Carey from Tool. Uh, even uh, Dave Matthews Band, I'm a big fan of them too. So it's just kind of a collaboration of everything. Cool. Yeah, that's that's a. I love the wide. The wide array of, of influences, like you said, because that I think that brings a lot to it. You know, that's makes it a, even more unique. I've been called a tool a lot in my life, but uh, <laughs> tool, tool, tool is a great band, man. The the album that I specifically remember is when you uh, kind of had a hologram or whatever, and the St. Andrews Fault out in California would drop off on that CD. I don't know which one it is by by name, but and then what was cool about that same album is we were drinking one night at a party. And about 15 minutes after the last song, there was a hidden song in there, which we thought was, you know, we didn't know if we hit, hit go. So I'm going to give you a couple influences just specifically from your genre, if you will. Um, Pantera, Great Southern Trend Kill, Metallica is what I used to jam out to on the way to my high school basketball games, you know, Masters of the Puppets. Uh, Insane Clown Posse is a kind of a random one, but uh, I, can, I can definitely get down with that. Um, I'm Jay and Shady, on the talent side, out of the rock industry, man, I've always appreciated uh, Clapton. I, th I think he's very talented uh, behind behind the guitar, and uh, those are just to name a few. But um, if I can say where you guys have developed today versus when you first started a few albums ago, what do you feel like's next on the horizon as far as what you're going to do, maybe a sound that you want? I'm going to be quiet and let you explain to me. Uh, what you hope is next over the horizon in the near future for the band? Well, I'll, I'll say this first shout out. Um, I started the band with my brother, Frank. So love you, Frank. Um, him and I started just as like a kind of an experiment and a couple of songs, you know, he was singing classic rock stuff or folk music. And I'm like, dude, you should be singing like hardcore ACDC with that boy. So if you listen to the early stuff. It was very ACDC classic rock, super proud of it. And then we progress to, uh, you know, adding these fine gentlemen and bringing influences, recording more. And I think really, uh, I think our best stuff is ahead of us. Uh, if you listen to some of the newest music, we just released an album, King, uh, which is awesome. And uh, it's, you know, songs written by our awesome bass player, awesome. vocal cool. melodies by, you know, our singer here. And shout out to uh, uh, Dave English, Riley. Uh, we got to work with him as a singer a while back, some influences, but, uh, you know, JT's writing some great stuff, Ryan on the drums. Uh, and then Sean is joining us for uh, some new singles and some other projects. We just played last night and featured a new single, uh, unless we deface that uh, we're recording with uh, Sean featured on vocals. So when you hear the music, I think sonically it's our best stuff uh, for sure, because, you know, we're getting better at that craft, but the music itself, the the harmonies, the guitar, the way the, you know, and what John adds on the bass, Ryan on the drums, it's just turning into very much its own. Or like even I listen to some of the stuff and I'm like, I couldn't even say who that sounds like. It just sounds like us, honestly. Yeah, that's cool. And I think that's what we're most proud of. We're not like, oh, those guys, you know, sound like this band. Or they, you hear little elements of bands for sure, because everyone has their influences. But I think it's, and I'm not saying this because I'm in the band, but just, I think it's the best rock and roll, you know, hard rock stuff, middle road rock is, you know, we're not screamers, but uh, I think it's just the best stuff that's out there. And we're going to be releasing some more that's just going to top that. Cool. So with, uh, with doing the collaboration with Sean, um, is that, how, how do you guys feel about like, um, 
whenever different bands go off and do little side pro- projects with other bands, like, you know, like Velvet Revolver or like uh, Temple of the Dog, you know, like that kind of thing. Are, are you guys, uh, is that, are you a fan of that kind of thing? Like, it sounds like you like to, you like the collabs. Now I used to hate it. Did you? I was very bitter. I felt betrayed when, when my <laughs> artists would go off and play with other people. How dare they do that? How dare Maybe. they? <laughs> Uh, no, I, but you know, that was, I was young. I was naive. I had no idea. And I, and even as, as my own musician, I hadn't played with enough people to realize the benefit in that, um, you know, from a musician standpoint and from a listener standpoint, because that's how you get some of these sounds. You, you, you take elements of everything you love, you fuse it together and you come up with something that no one's ever heard. Sorry. I got to. I got to throw you a basketball reference, uh, but it, it's correlating to what you're saying. In basketball, it's style. You can be a fundamental player. You can be a high leaper. You can be a shooter. I think what's cool about music is just within a 20 mile radius, you may have someone in your, what I'm going to call a genre or site that maybe they sound similar, but maybe they don't, or maybe they think they're this or that. Tell me a little bit about what's your general niche, maybe within a 20, 30 mile radius of where you're at as far as what what type of music, you know, what type of venues you're playing out, just to give the crowd kind of a sense of of what you're doing. Oh, we're we're literally playing everything. Uh, we uh, we played a uh, an outdoor band shell in the back of a fire company. Uh, we actually have another show there coming up soon with a really good uh, uh, cover band that Marty used to play with. Um, just Sunday night we played. Um, about, an, event about an hour north of us, nice. signature event center, indoor venue, nice big venue. I couldn't tell you how much it holds. Um, our next show is going to be on an outdoor stage. It's a music festival up in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. So there's going to be multiple stages, food vendors, beer, yeah. you know, uh, uh, people selling stuff, just hanging out in the afternoon, sunshine, and hopefully. And uh, just kind of walking around and enjoying a little bit of everything. And uh, right after that, we're going to play a uh, very old theater right down the street in Stroudsburg. And uh, that is one of my favorite venues. Sherman Theater. And uh, Sherman Theater. We're going to be opening up for Jack. So that one's, uh, oh, cool. you know, I mean, really, we play we're, not, we're, not, we're not selling out Madison Square Garden. You know, we're not playing for us locally. PBL Center is one of the bigger ones, or, or Allentown Fair, uh, Allentown Fairgrounds, that's another big one. We're an hour uh, east of Hershey, we're an hour north of Philly, we're about an hour and a half outside of New York City. So we got a lot of uh, opportunities, a lot of venues, a lot of potential um, going outward. But right now, you know, we're staying pretty close and, and still having, you know, a lot of good opportunities to play some uh, a variety of venues. So, to, uh, so what what year did you guys like? How long have you been around? I, you you may have said this earlier. If you did, I apologize. But how long have you been around? This current setup, less than a year. Okay. About a year. Nice. Okay. So that that's yeah. and and that I thought that I would read or that you'd said something about being a f- fairly new with this with this setup. So we're yeah. we're still fairly new, also. So like it's regardless of the. Uh, what size the growth is like when you see any kind of growth at all, it's super exciting. So, I mean, is it, has it gone beyond your expectations where you're at now compared to when you first started or um, did you yeah. see it just like it is now? Like, and, and kind of like what's mm-hmm. your expectations for say another year from now? Yeah. I mean, I, I think we've always believed in the music, you know, and, and just, I think what's hard is sometimes getting the opportunities. Like we we're a really hard work and band. I mean, this is a, an excellent, great group of guys. Like, and I'm not just saying that. Like, you know, we, we get an opportunity to play a showcase at the Sherman Theater. You know, we're getting early. We're helping set up. We're selling tickets. We're out engaging fans. And they're like, hey, we like it. Come back here. You know, we show up there. We're helping the first band set up. We're like, we're making the most out of every small opportunity. So I guess when, like, I never really thought about it growing up. We're like, hey, you, that band's hungry, man. They kicked our butt opener for us. Like you hear old bands say that. And now I'm kind of feeling it. I'm like, we're hungry to play. So we do all these things and when we go out, like, you know, we're rehearsing a set down to like the minute here, like we get a half hour. Great. We have a clock on the wall. Check yeah. it. We're, you know, we're, we're choreographing things. So 
I think when people keep come to see us too, they get to see a show that's well crafted. And then you just bring in the, you know, the talent, like, you know, what Sean brings, what JT's bring in, uh, John, Brian, it's just, then you hear the music, you're like, you know, these guys are the, the real deal. But yeah, I, I think we're starting to get the opportunities that we knew were there and uh, we hope to make the most of it. I'm I judging you a little bit and vibing with you a little bit, but what I think is cool is I, I get the impression that if I watched you at two different venues in a, in a three month radius, I feel like the shows would be innovative. Some of the same elements, some new yeah. stuff. I, I don't get the impression that it's a static show to where we do songs one through X and sorry, I'm not an artist, but like, it is, am I accurate with that assessment or am I not accurate with that assessment? 100, 150%. Cause even when we, you know, we had a little bit of a lull there, a little over a month. We didn't have any shows that gave us time to work on newer stuff, get that down, get that solid, work on recording, get stuff released. And then when we started to work toward these shows, we again, we just had one Sunday. We have one that's coming Saturday. We have one the following Thursday and that following Saturday. I think in eight days, we have four shows opening for National um, X. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and again, a variety of venues, variety of... Uh, um shows in the sense that you know one's like an outdoor festival one's one's behind a fire company at a at an outdoor like end of summer bash type thing and then two national acts and that's all happening within an eight-day period yeah. and we said we don't want to just pick one set list and practice it all the way through two of those this last show was only supposed to be a half an hour and uh band dropped out we got 45 minutes so there we made go. some tweaks there cool um uh, our next show is almost an hour and a half we got. So, you know, yeah, some of the similar stuff, but we're we're picking and choosing how we want stuff to flow. You know, the shorter ones, the half hour ones, we just want to we want to come in there. We want to punch you in the face early and finish by kicking you in the <laughs> exactly. exactly. You know, we're not going to slow down. And, uh, you not know, that, literally, you will not get into our show. I was going to say, I'm going to have to have a nose guard and a, and a face shield. You know, I'm going to have to go to go to war here. I mean, that yeah. sounds like a hell of a performance, right? Like getting kicked, be known as the band that kicks you in the face. You know what I mean? Not only with their music, but with their actual foot. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steel toe boot in the hey, face. So guys, I'm going to take a little different direction. Rather than the music part of it, talk to me about what kind of formulated the name of the band. I, I think Snake, and maybe I'm wrong there, but I'm, I'm going to let you kind of expand upon how you came up with the name of your band. Yeah, that's a question for Monty, for sure. You know what? I... I I think it goes back like we started out as a two piece in my brother strict recording band and I did everything and he did all the art stuff. I recorded the guitar, the bass and everything for like the first two albums. And, um, you know, he's, he's like, I think I got a name. And I'm like, why? He's like the Venom Assembly. I'm like, what does that even mean? He's like, <laughs> it's just, you know, and he explained it to me like two paragraphs. Of, and I'm like, that makes total sense. But I can't explain it. <laughs> but I think it's an assembly of music and of people and the venom piece just sounded really cool when you put it together like it was catchy with your yeah. ear and then uh we you know he made some logos and then we had a, another guy he said hey i think i just a local guy said i think i got a logo for you and i want to make some shirts i'm like cool and he came up with this circular logo used the barbed wire from our original one and put like this snake and then you know jt is just taking it too and and you know added things like the album for king and you know, God bless AI as well. You put something yes. in now and it comes up with 30 different things that are cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's kind of where it originated from. And yeah. Well, well I'm, I'm, let's be honest. I mean, how many ba most bands, I wouldn't say most bands, but a lot of bands, how many of them were just like, you know, kicking back, you know, s smoking some weed together. And all of a sudden they're like, you know, it'd be a cool band. You know, the Jesus t-shirts, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like all the time I'll hear stuff, I'll hear stuff and I'm like, that'd be a good band name or that'd be, you know, that'd be a really good band name. Where did that come from? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, so with your newest album, cause I know that that's what you guys, is it out yet or it's coming out? King, King was the EP that was released. Okay. So um, with that one, what was kind of, um, what'd you guys talk about before you started putting really putting songs on the album like as far as uh okay what, what what do we want out of this you know what kind of sound do we want what do we what kind of meaning lyrics all that kind of stuff well i i think what happened was uh i i joined marty about two and a half years ago and uh that was when uh frank was still singing and we had a different drummer at the time this guy johnny bop 
God bless him for, for what he did for us. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I just started showing Marty some riffs that I had over the ages uh, and some, you know, some songs. And then we, we rearranged them, uh, Marty and I. And then we had a, a, a second guitar player at the time who, who uh, left us. Uh, but Marty and I just started rearranging some of my songs that became uh, Horizon, uh, Turn the Other Cheek. And did I have one more? No, I forget. Uh, uh, well, Deep is Marty's song. Deep, yeah, kind of worked Venom, we, we kind of did together. Yeah, Venom was together. Yeah. And then Fraction. Oh, Fraction. Fraction. Like that started out yeah. with your riff, and then we yeah. homage that. Yeah, Fraction. added some harmonies, and it right. just ooh, took yeah. off. Yeah, Fraction I wrote about 35 years ago, but Marty and I, we, we changed the key around on it uh, to better suit uh, uh, what am I arranging this? <laughs> <laughs> we we rest really well together. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah. So yeah. So we we take items and and uh, you know it's like pulling parts off a shelf almost, and uh, you know we kind of find what uh what fits and you know Marty and I have kind of uh created a a sound together between his guitar and my bass. You know he like you said he's very Eddie Van Halen, but you know he's he's himself though. He's Marty. We you know we do all mesh very well. Uh, together as a group but we also kind of have these little side pockets those two you musically have one brain that's you yeah know, that's Scott awesome and, and even ryan i i actually so when i joined the band i joined as the drummer and i was doing some backup harmonies for for uh the singer at the time and uh he he left us to go to another project and uh I we had a show coming up and so I was like well let's pick like three songs that we can do with me drumming and singing and let's pull it off we got to because we were hosting that show and uh we did it and uh one of the guys who ran sound for us said you don't need to keep looking for a singer <laughs> find another drummer and let JT sing so we went that route and Ryan's been a great blessed kid. with Ryan. Yeah, awesome. So him and I both being drummers and, and really being close to that role for, you know, the vast majority of my musical experience and, and his musical experience, we really feed off each other. And then uh, we had Sean uh, a, a while ago, right around that transition time, we had Sean step in and he was helping out with some stuff. Um, and now we're just kind of bringing it back full circle for each, featuring him on some stuff he, he's been doing a little bit of work on his own and uh yeah we'll talk we'll talk maybe yeah. when we're ready we'll, we'll talk a little bit about a new single we have coming up too once we get through through king but uh, i think one of the, the cool things too that that i think separates us from other bands and i didn't even think about this till someone told you know kind of like hey you, you realize this like if you go on our facebook we have shows but then we also have like real pro videos mm -hmm. with great sound then we have a photographer. I'm a part of the, the fire department, and the guy does amazing work, Brian Wagner. He'll, you know, he comes and takes photos of some of us. So we have like these amazing photos, and then we do all of our own recording. I have, I have we're actually sitting in the studio, so we have music we're constantly putting out. We're like, man, you know, some bands are like amazing and they look good to play good, but their content is real slow. So one cool thing is, like you said, as you're coming to see shows and different things, almost every other month we're having something brand new. That someone could say, "Wow, I get to hear something new uh, coming from these guys," either either on the website, on you know music. So I think that's a pretty cool aspect. I think uh, I just want to mention real quick, off topic, that you know, a band that had an influence on my life growing up was a Rage Against the Machine. I really like how they kind of build up to the frustration, if you will, and then the mosh pit opens and you get rocking and rolling. But um, just a quick show of hand because I'm trying to learn you guys here. Uh, Quick show of hands. Who is the drummer of this band? Me. Okay, specific question for you. I know it might not be an influence for you, but I believe it's Phil Collins has that drum riff that I think is pretty strong <laughs> coming in the air tonight. The only reason right. I say that is not because the influence. <laughs> That's just one of the first ones that I remember. Me and my dad used to listen to that, and we'd get hyped up and play basketball or tennis or whatever we were doing. So now that, I, now that I've talked out of your genre, if you will, you can at least appreciate it. I guess what I'm going to ask you is this, man. How do you concentrate and bring all that energy to it and be part of it and collab together, man? Because if there's if there's one element that would be hardest for me to pick up, I think it would be drums. So could you speak on that a little bit for me? I, I think we all kind of feed off each other when we're playing. 
and you know i'll i'll feed off johnny and the guitar and the vocals and try to hit my accents with jt singing so it's it just becomes muscle memory when you play enough just like marty and johnny will tell you then jt with drums i know what he's saying though like the whole um um it's what do you call it hand eye court not it's not even hand eye coordination but like if you can play the drums you can definitely uh, walk and chew gum. You know what I mean? Like just that whole, yeah, it's like the controlled uh, aggression and like, yeah, I'm going to let Nick speak on. A little yeah. Bit. Yeah. I mean yeah, like I, I've, I've tried it, you know, and I end up like hitting the, hitting <laughs> exactly. the bass drum the same. Exactly. I'm like doing this with my feet and my hands at the same time, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like, like I would look like a ventriloquist, you know, I would yeah. be robotic and stuff. Um, so l- let me ask you this. Um, let's just say, um, Let's just say you're having sound issues and it's not your guys' fault. Let's just say the venue's having something. And let's just say I ask you to do X amount of seconds of freestyle stuff. Let me let me picture it like this. Is 45 seconds to a minute of freestyle just right in the middle with nothing behind it? Would that be challenging for you or would that come second nature and pretty easy? That would probably be pretty easy. You just come okay. up with a little groove and get some fills in there. Got it. Got it. I mean, the Jim show we ended up. played before, I had a little bit of sound issue, but we just dug through it. I did anyway. Yeah, or you can have some of that in like your back pocket and then just say that it's freestyle. You know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, yeah, we'll freestyle. And they're like, whoa, dude, that's crazy. You know, kind of like uh, how Aaron Lewis and um, what was that one dude, uh, Fred Durst, how they like supposedly on the spot like did the one song. Do you remember that? The I'm on, I'm on the outside or whatever it was. Some bands do that. They'll come up with like this, that, and they'll actually write a song. Like Steve Vai does that, and it's so cool. They'll have the crowd come up with something, and he'll write a song. That is cool, yeah. As they're going in the set for fun. Let me ask you this question, guys. So if I do a little research, and, and uh, I, I don't know the names, I know the, I know the, uh, the, the style, I've listened to a little bit. Let's just say I'm a major fan of yours in your area, and I know of X song and I know X amount of songs. So in other words, when I say that, maybe I know your top, let's just say five to seven. What's one song by name and album that you think is under, uh, uh, popular is the wrong term, but let's just say it's it, it's kind of underground a little bit. What's one song that you want to throw out to the podcast listeners and just say, hey man. Like one of, a, one of their a, songs? Yeah, yeah. Like a, I'm going to call it unheralded. What, what's one song out there that you think is pretty badass that the general public needs to hear for the first time? Well, I'd say turn the other cheek. Yeah, we don't really play that live. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think if, if, you're, if you were to look at the stuff we've recorded – Maybe like turn the other cheek would would be a, a a cool one. It has a lot of different layers. It has heavy. It has soft. It's it's a very much a, um, a you know pulls a lot of pieces of the of the band together. Got it. I think one that we just played live for the first time that's upcoming, and I'll let Sean talk about it. Um, where he's featured on vocals. It's called Unless We Deface. So you want to talk a little bit about it and kind of the story? Uh, yeah. Well, Unless We Deface is a basically the timeless metal song and it's uh it's very catchy um it has a lot of variations within the lyrics um the lyrical content is is uh deep um it, it hits hard into the chorus um so uh if you uh you know unless me the face is about to be our new our new single and um nice. you know all i could do is let uh, the rest of the guys elaborate on it okay yeah, I think it's I think it's a really good mix of uh, I, I don't think it sounds like any band. Sean wrote it, um, you know, a while back. We heard it and said, hey, like, we'd love to re-record that, you know, put our our spin on it. And the vocals just fit perfect. So and it's a cool anthem song. Like we, we haven't done a lot of like anthem songs. So you know, there's a part of like, you know, we are not forgotten <laughs> that people can connect with. So we're really excited about uh, about that one coming up. So that'll be our next single uh, coming out after, which King is already out, but that'll be our next big single. Yeah. How, how did you meet Sean? Just curious. Like, did um, did you guys already know each other? Or did you meet each other on, you know, on the road or? Craigslist. Craigslist. <laughs> Hell <laughs> yeah, man. Craigslist. <laughs> See, and, and y'all, y'all came out alive. That's, you know I what I mean? Like, that's a, that's a win. Sean called me. <laughs> I, uh, I had an ad out for a singer for, for cool. Marty and I, uh, Sean, Sean called me and we had him come down. 
Awesome. Yeah, I, I bought a used mattress that day, and I got a you know bass player in the band. <laughs> nice, yeah, yeah. There, there you go. go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and a date, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> <laughs> now, Sean, do you, I'm I'm under the assumption because you guys are saying that you collaborate. Um, are do you have uh, do you have your own thing going on, like your own project aside from uh, the uh, Venom Assembly? No, basically, I'm a poet from an early age. Um, I played guitar a lot in my teenage years. I started on the saxophone, but um, everything kind of fell apart when I was about 18. Uh, you know, the whole everyone has a story. Basically, sure. Real rough childhood. Uh, a lot of things happen, don't really need to go into right now, but it basically um, motivated me where um, I exerted my pain uh, onto paper. And so um, by doing that um, and playing guitar, I ended up building my first band in my early 20s. Um, and so a, a few of my songs, a, a few of my poems, um, we, we made songs in my first band. And so... Basically, that's what happened with Unless We Deface is uh, these guys, they like the sound of it. Um, these guys happen to be much more um, extensive uh, on, you know, uh, music uh, musicians. It's writing and recording. Uh, and yeah. And so, like, they turned sense. this song into, like, an amazing, um, amazing song. And so, like, uh, yeah. So, well, when you um, earlier, I wanted to make sure to, to mention this because I had forgotten. But earlier when we first started you'd said something about and obviously i'm not going to ask you what happened but you'd said something about you know through some dark times you uh were able to create some music from that and that i mean that seems to be the case most of the time it seems like the best music comes from like either pain or some kind of a, some kind of it doesn't have to be pain but some kind of an of emotion so yeah. i mean would is that pretty typical for would you say for all you guys anything that you've written or contributed to the band would you say that there's some kind of a deep root of of uh emotion involved there for all you guys Oh, hundred percent. Um, if you look at King, so King's the most recent album, it's, it's the EP that we just released, uh, deep and horizon are on that, but those were redone from previous, uh, singers and, and people in the band. So we liked them. They definitely fit our sound. So we just redid them. Uh, but then you look at Venom, Venom came out during a transition, uh, I personally have been uh, sober from alcohol now for a, a little over three and a half years. Awesome. And I wrote that as, you know, Venom for me was alcohol. Yeah. You know, and I, I wrote that like what it, you know, that song describes what, what it did for me, the hold it had on me, and then my, you know, eventual triumph over it. And again, during that time, you know, we got to know Sean and, and Sean has a, a, a little bit similar of a story there with that and um you know it, it was just amazing how that all flowed and and for it to kind of play into this uh cobra and the name the venom assembly uh is just kind of amazing it, it really all worked out the way it was supposed to and yeah. and you asked earlier oh did you got is this where you guys saw you being absolutely not because again yeah. i joined this band as a drummer Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that's where I was going to live, you know, maybe do some backup vocals here and there. Cause in previous, but I'd like to sing, but I never considered myself a singer. Um, I could, you know, throw a harmony in some, some cover tunes and old bands that I was in. Um, but that was the extent of it. And I like to be backstage and I like to hide behind the drums and it took a lot to, and I'm still learning, but it took a lot to get used to being that front man out on stage having nothing in front of me except a microphone in my hand and maybe this tiny little microphone pole you know i didn't even think about that standing there you know standing in front of me yeah and uh, you know then uh I, I one of the other songs fractured um uh, my full-time job as a paramedic mm -hmm. and i was going routinely on calls for this this girl she had some you know some issues, some some sure. uh, kind of behavioral and, and psychiatric issues. But, you know, we had all these repeated encounters with her on the ambulance. And after a while, it became pretty obvious that her outburst and her her wanting, the whole reason that, that she was in that boat is she just wanted the affection from, you know, a, a family member. Mm -hmm. And she, she, she 
Now, I don't know the whole backstory, so I'm not going to throw that family. Obviously, sure. I'm not sure. going to name I don't know the whole thing. I'm sure there was good reason and she was where she had to be for, you know, her, her best outcome and the family, you know, couldn't have her at home for it. But it just resonated with me. So when I wrote that one, I was like, man, you know, if you've ever felt like someone you cared about or should have cared about you was just turning their back on you. Again, I made it a very black and white issue, which it's not. Um, but for writing purposes, I did. Right. And again, you know, everyone has that. Is it a, is it a family member, a direct family member? Is it a relationship? Is it a sibling? Is it a distant cousin, you know, that you, you guys grew up, you know, every family function running around playing together. And then, you know, you hit adolescence and, oh, you're not born. Someone's always experienced something like that. So I think if you listen to the songs, you know, like between Fractured and Venom and Unless We Deface, it's, you know, these guys just write amazing lyrics that I think brings a whole different aspect to music and a whole different reason for people to listen to it. It's really cool. Yeah. Guys, I want I want to say that I think there's plug and play bands you guys, you guys are living the mosaic life in your band. It's amazing to hear that I came in here with this purpose and do this. It's amazing to hear that I wouldn't think that you would do it that way. You're, you're influential in that area. And I think, um, you know, what I'm going to share with you is what really shaped my life is I, I made some bad choices when I was younger. And, you know, I'm here to tell you I should have been in the car uh, the night that two of my friends never never came home, you know. So, like, you know, I know that's a little bit of a downer, but that shaped my life. That shaped my influence that shaped that shaped a lot of the music that I listened to during that time. So I want to want to tip my cap to say that you're kind of like clay molding, lack of better term, and you're constantly molding, you're constantly professional, you're constantly growing. And I think what's a blessing that I have from this side of the mic is when we look back six months from now, you guys want something very similar than what we want is just to be in front of more people, uh, sticking true to yourselves doing great things and meeting new audiences across, you know, your metro area or a bigger, little bit, you know, different footprint, get in front of different people. Um, what's maybe a, um, if you could do anything, let's say philanthropic, uh, maybe a music camp, um, you know, showing people, exp expanding people out. What's a, what's a, what's a project that you would do if you could do anything? I know it's kind of a random question, but I'm curious to see what direction you would go with that. I'm not sure what you mean. Um, maybe like a maybe like a exposing someone to music that wouldn't normally get exposed to. Maybe yeah. like a high school age group, or or let's say a college music composition 101 class. That those would be two examples. A nursing home. No, I'm just kidding. There you go. I'll throw an I'll throw an answer out. For, for me, it's like helping other people with the recording piece because I tell you nowadays it's super expensive to go to a studio. Some studios don't do people right. It's, it's sad, but, you know, I won't name names, but you hear stories locally. And uh, I'm actually helping another band. Shout out to Intoxication. They're, they're an awesome local rock band. Um, we're helping them record a song. Uh, and just some others, you know, I've reached out and I've worked with them recording music, you know, that, that they've reached out and said, hey, you know, I have some ideas. Uh, you know, I, I know you're right. I love your stuff. Is that something you think, you know, we wrote some songs with the, uh, uh, we mentioned Johnny Bobby did an EDM album, which is really cool. So for me, giving back is taking those skills and talents and giving it to someone. And I don't charge them. I don't, I don't want to do it for yep. the money, but yep. I really believe like getting music out there, it's healing for the people that write it. Yep. It's, it's, it's that way. And then people get to listen to it connect with it to me that's that's what i like to give back uh, if i had something you knocked it out of the park because when i go to a concert i got to be real brutally honest with you man i go to a fifteen thousand seat venue and i i can see that guy shooting a three-point shot right i can see that guy casting a lure out in the water it's just amazing to me that the collaboration the energy that you bring um i can never do that so i want to i want to really reiterate that to you guys that man there's a little jealousy if i'm in the crowd you know what i mean because i'm like man it'd be so cool to just be up there um and, and kind of do that um yeah i wanted to go I, ahead Nick. i wanted to go back to something real quick when we were you were talking about how you started out as you th figured you would always be the drummer and now being the front man i didn't even think about that aspect of it how was that like when you when you first <laughs> when you, were you scared like were you scared shitless i would have been scared shitless you know what yeah, i mean right. like holy cow coming up to be the 
still can be. We, we had a pep talk on numerous times. I get a, <laughs> I get a lot every show like this. Hey, we're relying on you, buddy. Go get them. Well, and, and everything, you know, when I was checking out the Facebook page and everything um, and watching you guys, like all the comments, everybody I've seen, it, it seems like that people tend to have the same outlook that you guys have a lot of energy. So, I mean, that says something right there, you know, that so, you know, maybe just you get on stage, the muse takes over. I don't know. But I mean, like, you know, just I guess I can't imagine going from being like you said, being behind the drums, like to where you're just doing your thing and then going to front man. It's the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I still scared. Um, <laughs> I, I sometimes get a little ca over caffeinated before we go on stage, and then it makes it way worse because I'm like, oh, I need the energy to bounce around and and be energetic, <laughs> and then it makes the nerves that much worse to where it's like a sheer panic attack. But no, it's uh, it's fine. We work through it. I'm sure after no, the first it, song, it's it's fine. I, I still uh, I I still work with that, but you know. That's Again, cool. like we said, I mean, every time we practice, when we're recording and live shows, we really do feed off each other very well. And so there is an element that I can look out and it can be a relatively large crowd. And, you know, maybe I get those nerves. But the second I pull the microwave and look to my left and see Marty shredding on a solo or or, you know, get done doing a band intro and, and hear that, that, uh, bass kick in for horizon. I know I got my boys behind me. Yeah. I can always kind of take a step back, chill back there with Ryan, get that sense of home. And then I'm back at it with the, you know, with the next lyric. <laughs> so no, like, right, no solo, uh, rock ballads. No, like, uh, like the music comes down, the lights come down and then spotlight just on you. And then rock ballad, nothing like that. I think I think lighting <laughs> where we are next. We do some you know, stuff like gonna, that. We, yeah. we, I got a sample pedal. We have like an intro on a song. Another song is a little something. So we we bring a lot of different aspects to to the live show. We sure do. We give each other hugs too. Yeah, yeah hey, that helps. You know, guys, got to be a little random here. Nick's already heard the story a time or two, but basically, I'm playing basketball 25 years ago. I'm in a gym, and a couple old stoners come up to me and they say, "Hey, man, can you move my drums?" in my in my setup and i look at him like what who the hell are you like I, I don't know who you guys are so i was like okay my dad told me to you know help people out so i'm moving their drums hanging out with them for an hour and a half it was actually steppenwolf and three dog night uh oh. got got to hang out with them didn't know who they were and then they told me afterwards and it was kind of cool but i guess i guess the question that i have for you guys um what's the camaraderie like after a show like you've aced it you've you know your your final exam and you get an a on it you just killed it you read the crowd you killed it Walk me through what the, not a withdrawal is like a substance, but what's the withdrawal of the crowd no longer being on, the lights on? What does that look like if the show ends at 11? You know, what's what's going through your mind at 11, 30, 12 o'clock? That's, that's kind of an interesting oh. behind the scenes aspect that I'll never get to experience. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. The reality of the situation. Yeah. There's a lot of adrenaline when you come off the stage. You know, you just killed it. You know that, um, you know, you just did the best you, you could, and um, you made an impression on the, the national act. You made an impression, a good impression on the promoter. You made a good impression, uh, impression on the fans, hopefully new fans. Yeah. Yeah, I think it it's, was. It okay. is. It's very much an adrenaline high, and it takes a while to come down off of it. Yep. But then you got yep. people come up like, hey, can you sign this? You know, yep. and hey, you know, high five. So there's like Hell an yeah. after, you know, an after part of it, which is cool. And then you get to see. Like, again, you know, we're one of the things that I'm most proud of about this group is we're not self-centered. We're looking to like, hey, the next band's coming up. Like, are this last show, I, I stepped down and I was like, hey, guys, how can I help you? What can I help you with? So we look at it like for me, yes. if the night is successful, that's as much what it's about as us. If we play and kill it, the other two bands are struggling or something else goes bad. You know, it's, it's almost like a team effort. And that's that's really, sound. really true. It is. Yeah. Sound I like that. Like that. Even, even before the show, this last one we mentioned, we opened up for Trap. Chris, the lead singer of Trap, he's doing the same thing. This dude's been touring for 20 years, and he's out there. Not only did we get a chance to meet him, and we did ask, him, like, hey, can we give you a hand? He's at his own merch table folding shirts. Nice. Yeah. So he's, he's up there. He's back and forth on stage for hours before he even goes on. And he's folding T-shirts at his own merch table. I'm you know, get... that's I mean, I, I've never seen that 
personally. Yep. Yep. And I just I had a whole lot of respect for him for that. Same. So when you guys come into Indy. <laughs> you know what? God bless Facebook because we get like we'll put some someone, someone will be like, Hey, we're in Texas. You guys are awesome. When are you coming to Texas? <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> a bunch of your friends together and we'll get down there. So but uh, we actually get that quite a bit, like from other people. Hey, you know, I'm in Florida. You guys are awesome. You're playing Florida anytime. Like, no, we just, you know, still local, but maybe someday we'd sure. love to. <laughs> How about you, Brian? How do you feel coming off? Tired. tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there I you bet. Go. Yeah. I would almost have to ice his shoulder. I got a torn rotator cuff. I won't go into why, but it's a baseball injury. But any, anyway, like uh, I, th- I think that would, I think that would be tough, honestly, because that's uh, that's some physical exertion. I, I think I'd have to stay hydrated under the lights, you know, because I've been in broadcasting and moving the lights. I'm gonna have all five of you answer this next question. I want you guys to maybe give a random shout out that you haven't to yet. Somebody in the industry, a random person, an influential person, a music instructor from years ago. All five of you throw out just a random name just so that person can feel good about the mention. They can be with us now or they can be, um, you know, past. The, you know, it, it's it's a, a tribute's always a good thing as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll start off, you know, a couple of guys I played in uh, previous bands with. Uh, that being uh, English Dave Riley, uh, our former singer. He's now with uh, Ashes of Us All, who I played with, uh, along with my buddy Steve Shaver. Um, I will say my wife, uh, I don't think I give her enough credit. You know, she comes to shows, she puts up with me getting some time away from the family. We have a three year old daughter, beautiful three and a half year old wow. daughter, all of, uh, but she's been awesome in supporting me, you know, through this kind of like living a dream, uh, which is really cool. But no, shout out to my wife, Katie. Well, now we all got to say girls. He sabotages, he sabotages. <laughs> I love her. I love her. I love her. She puts up with so much. Uh, musically, Mrs. Lisa Stahl gave me my first drum, gave me my first drum lessons. Uh, that thing graduated into my first job after being a paper boy. I was babysitting for her son, who I think now has a kid. She's I'm old. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd like to say a uh, shout out to um, DJ Tom Taylor. Um, he does a lot of hard work for local and national acts. Uh, I'm not sure if he gets the credit that he deserves, but I, I know he deserves a lot of credit. Um, he's just constantly giving and giving and giving. Uh, I don't know if I could do that job myself, but uh, definitely Tom, um, definitely Tony Zangara. Uh, definitely these guys right here. Um, yeah, that's what I got. I'm going to go with uh, John Sanfilippo. He was my drum teacher at the California Drum Shop. Taught me everything I know, and uh, he's a great guy and a great drummer. Cool. cool. Where where can we find you guys? Like, give us all the plugs. Where where can we? Uh, and, and we'll make sure we share everything and tag you guys and everything we can. So whatever you want to give us. Facebook, Instagram. Uh, as far as social media, those are really the only two now. Um, none of us are are uh, social media inclined, and I talk to my younger coworkers who are on everything all the time exactly and they say oh that, yeah don't worry about that uh you know <laughs> this, 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 that's the other all right so i'm good with facebook and instagram yeah yeah, yeah you're fine so definitely those will my be those space check on my space now. my space <laughs> there you go <laughs> we, we stream on every platform gandora spotify amazon music definitely follow facebook. you know uh okay. youtube wow. we have we have a youtube channel so um you can type in the Venom Assembly on on most things, and it'll it'll link you to to something. Yeah, and that's what's cool. Like the band name is original. If when you Google it, it'll pretty much give you everything. Yeah. You're um, right. Yeah. You yeah. are right. Yeah. We had, when I Googled it, I mean, there wasn't much uh, it, until it got down to off topic things like snakes and stuff. You know, like there, it was pretty much you guys. So you're right, guys. We actually we- have a merch yeah. shop. Well, um, it, it's on our business card and our Facebook page. So we have a merch shop. And our merch table, if, if when people come to shows, they're like, we're not quite at the level of KISS. You know, they brand everything. But, I mean, we got the beard koozies. We got the wrist bracelets. We got the shirts. You know, the stickers. We have all that stuff. And uh, when you, you know, band photo, when you put it together, it's actually pretty cool. I think it works well again. So, I want a Marty Mo- a bobblehead. Do you have one of those? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. Guys, but I think I- it... 
I think innovation and music stands the test of time. What I really like is, is different ages, different backgrounds, the, the poetry aspect, man, that's, that's, that's some cool stuff to me, man, because that's something that I have a kind of a hidden passion for that. I really want to start scratching again, because I think music, I think music is poetry, regardless of how it's, how it's deemed or written, not being talented, you know, composing or anything, but I think it all tells a story. You guys are winners. You're building, you're doing great things. You're easy to talk to. I really watched too. It was interesting to see what guy was going to take the question. And it was almost like you didn't even need to make eye contact. You knew how to do that, which that's a cohesive unit for me. So really tipping my cap to you. Same with Nick and I, we don't really have to make eye contact or, Hey, let two guys answer before we interject. We got that down to a science now. So I, I want to tip my cap and say that was badass on your guys' part. You weren't talking over each other. You were natural. So you guys, you guys killed it, man. As well, well I think I, I have the ability so. to mute him too if I have to. Yeah, exactly. He just, <laughs> just he kidding. didn't want to listen to me, so he's like, "Hey, this Jack Jack needs to be quiet." I already said I've been called a tool several times. You know, not by me. Band, not by so. me. True. 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 Thank you guys for having us on the show, and I just want to say I'm sure people already follow you, but your show is amazing, and we mean that. We were talking beforehand. You know, we watched a lot of your videos and that, and you guys are doing a really pretty unique. I haven't seen anything like this that is so well-rounded but just kudos to you guys for Thank engaging you. all the different things and you're bringing it you know to people to watch in a really cool way yeah i hope hopefully we can uh we can cross cross paths someday in the cheesiest like Velveeta send off that i can give you and i can't say it because i do have a little bit of a sinus issue right now i got to use the r-a-w-k with the elongated rock you know, so that that's the that's the send off I'm gonna give you. I know I know it sucked because my voice is kind of messed up right now, but you know I gotta give you gotta give you the rock out and uh, just just keep killing it, man. You're in a, you're in a unique area because there's there's blue collar workers, there's a combination, there's good styles and stuff. So just keep killing it and and great things are about to come your guys' way. They already have come your way, but they're gonna continue to come your way. Yep, and Thank we'll be you. following you. Maybe if we we may we've been looking for an excuse to take a road trip to visit someone that you know that we've had on. So you know we'll be following you. <laughs> All right, you guys have a good night. Take care, guys. Take care, guys. Thanks.